What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll talk about how credit scores work and how you can improve them. So it's been a while since I've done a personal finance basics video. I thought credit would be a good topic to talk about. Especially because I've been seeing all of these little uh, Experian Boost ads in my YouTube. So if you've been seeing tons of those ads too, we will touch upon that product and what it is later on. But first, why should we care about credit scores? So everyone's always talking about, you know, how good's my credit or, you know, my credit's no good or whatever. Uh, really what they mean is their credit score, right? And uh, the whole idea is that lenders need some kind of a basis for determining whether or not you're a risky or a relatively safe prospect to lend money to. And so that's why we care about credit scores, because they can help us to get uh, better terms on things like a mortgage, uh, better interest rates, for instance, uh, also for, um, say, if we're going to borrow to to buy a car. Not even just those things, but really way beyond that here in the States. These things also factor into um, apartment rentals, into uh, when you sign up for a uh, cable or a telephone service. They have some exposure because they're signing a contract with you and uh, they want to be able to mitigate that. Um, so a lot of times if you have a better credit score, uh, you might not need to put down uh, deposits that you would in other situations. Um, and so terms can just be a little bit better uh, if you have a sturdier credit score rather than one that really makes you seem like risk. Oh, another one that where this is involved is in um, your, your car insurance also, right? So having a poor credit score can also make you look like a greater car insurance risk as well. But as with everything, it's not all that simple. There's not just one credit score out there for you. In fact, there's a lot of them. So the, the original, the one that lenders actually really care about, uh, is what's called your FICO score. That's F-I-C-O. That's from Fair Isaacs Corporation. And uh, this was established in uh, 1956. So this is a scoring formula that, based on different categories, comes up with a number for your credit score. And this score range has a top end of 850. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Right, so the real dominant player here again is, uh, is Fair Isaacs Corporation, the FICO score. Uh, but you might see a lot more nowadays, there's something called a Vantage score. So this is, um, you know, a competitor, it's an alternative used by some. And this was established back in 2006 by the three main credit bureaus. So there, again, there's two companies that do the scoring. FICO is really the, the, you know, the mainstay, the standard. Um, but the three credit bureaus are trying to push out this Vantage score. So to make things more complicated, beyond having just these two scores, or scoring agencies, then as we just talked about, there are three main credit bureaus. So there's Experian, there's Equifax, and there's also TransUnion. And each of these companies has basically your credit history. It's got a log of um, everything that you've done related to credit. And there can be differences. So your Experian credit report might have some data that's not on your Equifax credit report which may not be on your TransUnion credit report. Although TransUnion generally tends to be the most complete. That may have changed in recent years, but um, you know, throughout the years and when I was involved in credit counseling, certainly TransUnion uh, was the most complete uh, record. So again, there are three sets of data that we can use to plug in to come up with your credit score. And then that calculation can be done either by FICO or by Vantage score. But it's even more complicated than that because there's not just one FICO score. So again, FICO is the dominant player, but they have different scores depending on um, which credit bureau is being used. So FICO score two, for instance, uses your Experian. FICO score five uses your Equifax report. And FICO score four uses your TransUnion report. But there are also these base scores, Fair Isaac scores eight and nine, and then there's a special score for auto lending, which is called FICO Auto. Mortgage lenders generally use two, four, and five. Now, while there are these different uh, scoring formulas and uh, the reports can differ depending on which credit bureau the data is coming from, we generally don't need to worry about all of that minutia, right? If we're doing the things that are going to improve one credit score, then they're likely well, they're, they're going to be helping with a different credit score as well. So generally just showing lenders that you're a not a risky prospect is going to help in all regards and we don't really need to worry about all that detail. So what's a poor score? Well, a poor score is less than 580. This makes you look like a really risky borrower. Uh, beyond that, so between 580 and just under 700, that's more like the fair range. So this is below average, um, but 
compared to poor, then uh, a lot more applications would be approved. However, the terms uh, are likely to be less favorable than if you had a higher credit score. Then with FICO scores between 670 and 739, we get into the good range or more like the average range for the US. And so most lenders um, are willing to uh, to, to transact a loan uh, with credit scores at this range, although the terms might not be um, the absolute best that they can offer, of course. Then between 740 and 799, we get to the very good range. And then beyond that, up to 850, which would be the perfect score. Then we're in the exceptional range. So again, as we go up the range, not only are we increasing the likelihood that we will be approved for uh, some kind of a loan or whatever the contract might be, but as we go up the range, we're also offered uh, better terms. All right, so how do we improve this credit score? Basically, just by doing what you're supposed to be doing. So there's really no magic to it. Uh, there's no huge secret. And as we go along, uh, there may be one or two myths that we can debunk as well. So, of course, the most important thing is to show that you can pay your bills, right? <laughs> that, that, you know, when you say when you need to pay, you're able to pay. And so that's your payment history. So this is a very important factor in your credit score. And that's your percentage of on time payments. So just pay things on time. <laughs> I, you know, have everything set to be paid automatically. And so I never have to worry about um, a late payment on any of my credit cards or really anything at all. Uh, the next big factor is your debt load. So your debt load would generally be used by a mortgage lender to look at your debt to income ratio, for instance, whereas um, your utilization. So let's say you have total available credit of $20,000 and you're using $2,000. Then there's a whole lot of room there. And so it doesn't look like you're um, at a place where you're really taking on a ton and ton of debt and you're really kind of um, in, in dire straits, right? So both of those measures are helpful. Lower being better. So we want to have a lower utilization rate, all else equal. So utilizing a very small amount of our total available uh, credit. And the other is to take on uh, very minimal debt so that we have a, um, a good debt to income ratio. So how much debt do we have to take on? Well, really, uh, generally, sort of zero. Now, so what I mean by that is some people think that you need to carry a balance in your credit cards in order to improve your credit score. Uh, this is absolutely not necessary. You should, in fact, it's very, very expensive, right? Because you're going to have to pay interest on that. Um, I do not carry a balance on my credit cards. I set them to pay automatically in full. So the balance is completely zeroed out on the payment date every month. I pay zero in interest and this has had zero negative impact on my credit score, right? So you're still making all of the on-time payments. You have a great utilization rate and you have a very good debt to income ratio. So nothing to worry about. You do not need to carry a balance on your credit cards. The next big factor in your, um, in your credit score is your credit history. So the longer that you've been, uh, a borrower or building up your credit score, of course, uh, this is going to have a bigger factor on your credit score. And and I've seen kind of two different ways this is looked at. Vantage score might look at sort of the age of your oldest account. Um, others look at the average age of your accounts where um, adding on too many new accounts can bring that average down. Um, but in general, this is really, um, there's not much you can do about this except continue to do the right thing for longer and longer periods of time. So this is kind of just a benefit of, um, say, having started early with using credit responsibly uh, over time. Uh, or, you know, you can't go back in time. So whenever it is now, just know that um, with time, uh, this factor of your credit score will improve. So there's nothing to worry about. Just look at the other factors. Um, the only one, again, is uh, a lot of new credit lines can bring down that average age of accounts. And so that is one uh, thing to consider. Along those lines, another factor is new credit. And so um, there are kind of two ways to look at it. One is um, how many new accounts have you opened within the last 24 months? That's a factor in your Vantage score. And, and of course, you know, if we're adding on a lot of, the, uh, of accounts, it might look like uh, things are tighter for us and we're needing to borrow more money. And so this, of course, should make us look more risky to any subsequent lenders, right? Um, the other uh, way is, um, in terms of uh, inquiries, right? Because not all um, not all applications get approved, and so classically in the FICO formula, um, if you're applying for tons and tons of credit cards uh, throughout a, a wide or long period of time, then this is going to have negative consequences for your credit score. Uh, just the one application in a month. 
isn't going to make a big difference, maybe 10 or 15 points, something like that. Um, but if you're applying like every month, um, then this will have a little bit more of an impact. Still, it's not the hugest, um, the hugest factor in determining your score. Um, and by the way, let's say that at one time you're applying uh, to multiple lenders to see where you can get the best terms. Like if you're applying for a mortgage, you might apply to a credit union and to this bank and that bank and this bank. You don't have to worry about um, each of those inquiries hurting your score. Um, it's really just a, like a, that. That's that's factored into the the FICO formula, right? So it's um, the, it would be different if you were applying for each one of those um, in a different month. And then lastly, we have credit mix. So do you have revolving accounts? These are like credit cards. And do you have um, secured loans? So things like uh, a mortgage or, um, or an automobile loan. So having a mix of credit is also a positive factor in your credit report, um, but they're not strictly necessary to have um, a good to strong credit score. So, you know, I, I had an auto loan at one point, um, Kind of regret it actually i i don't think i'd do it again in fact i don't want to have an auto loan again unless the interest rates are very very low and then it kind of makes sense in that way but if the interest rates that i borrowed from um you know i sort of regret that well never i don't really have any regrets but you know if i could go back and talk to my old self and maybe i would change things but not a big deal uh, anyway my point is that um in terms of this factor we should i think Personally, I would just get what I need. I wouldn't go out of my way to get a loan um, just to show a different mix of accounts, unless I was really desperate to increase my score very quickly at the beginning. Um, I guess one thing we could do uh, to try to make it very um, not costly is to come, you know, get a loan for something we're gonna buy anyway at very, very favorable terms, and then uh, make sure that there's no penalty for early payment, right? Um, and then just pay off the loan uh, pretty early. Uh, then that would show a mix of accounts and then, and, uh, but it would have cost us minimal amount of interest, if any. Um, ideally we could get like 0% or something like that. I don't know. So I suppose that could be helpful. Um, but yeah, probably I wouldn't really go out of my way. Um, the credit score just improves over time and, uh, it's not that big of a deal, you know, if I get it up, you know, that much within a month or two months or a year or whatever, right? Hopefully. So what can I do, though, if I've made mistakes in the past that are showing up on my credit report? So negative information generally stays on the credit report for either the statute of limitations or seven years, whichever is longer. So generally after seven years, things are gonna come off anyway. Um, but that's not to say that you're not responsible for old debts. Um, certainly that's more of a moral and personal ethical dilemma. A lot of the damage that's done to your credit score is done uh, when the account is charged off initially and goes to collections. So at that point, you're really just trying to um, mitigate the damage a little bit. So it is possible at, at that stage to um, to settle with the creditors. So you can negotiate to pay much, much lower amounts on the full balance, um, or you can pay them off in full, but a lot of that might be fees. Anyway, that's all up to you. But those are options available to take care of those, um, those charge-offs or, or debts that went to collections in the past. But for the most part, it's just you know, pay things on time and uh, just keep doing that for a long period of time and your credit will improve. There's not really any magic bullet. Now, uh, Experian is trying to sell um, a new product. So if you watch a lot of YouTube like me, um, I imagine you do, uh, you probably have seen these Experian Boost ads and uh, they look very gimmicky. Uh, they, you know, I see them and I immediately think, ah, eh, it doesn't seem right because we have a credit bureau that's selling you a product to improve your credit score, which is based on the data that the credit bureau has, right? So immediately it looks kind of weird, but at least they're not the ones that calculate the score, right? Like if FICO or um, Vantage Score, although Experian is a part of the trio of credit bureau, you know, credit bureaus, uh, was directly marketing a product to improve your score, then that would be really, really fishy, right? Um, definitely a conflict uh, there. Uh, but anyway, I, so I looked it up just to see, hey, what actually is this thing? And um, what it is, is that they will, if you opt in, um, start publishing details on your payment history uh, for things that aren't ge weren't generally included in your credit score, uh, in your credit history. So things like um, your Netflix account, uh, utilities, so gas, uh, electricity, and 
water, your mobile phone, internet and cable. So they're working with all, all the providers of these services in order to kind of beef up uh, your credit uh, your credit report, uh, your Experian credit report. Because again, this is only from Experian. It won't affect your Equifax or your TransUnion credit reports. And so it's really, it's not a factor at all for any lenders that are not pulling your Experian report. Um, it won't help if you know your mortgage lender only pulls TransUnion, for instance. Um, if they pull all three, which is called a tri-merge and do an average, then it will help you a little bit. But again, it's going to be mitigated by the fact that the other two, um, it's not updating on the other two. Uh, there is a competitor, and that's called eCredible Lift. I hadn't heard about it until I did a little research today. And that one will update your TransUnion score with some of this stuff. So that's something to consider as well. Um, so I think in the early, early stages, um, if you uh, want to you know, help uh, show lenders more quickly that you know, you're a viable prospect, um, then this might be something to consider, you know, especially if it's free. Um, but you want to be careful, right? It's double-edged sword in case anything um, wrong happened with these accounts. And then also because it's um, really new, it's not been part of the, the credit scoring formula for a long time, um, it, it is possible that a lender might look at these contracts as debts and then they would increase your debt load and therefore thereby decrease your credit score. So, eh. I don't know. It looks like maybe it looks like a promising idea anyway. Up to you. And then it might be really good to see, hey, in about a year or two, when, you know, if it, be if it takes off and becomes more standard, you know, are lenders really looking at this and is it really helping? So it might be a bit kind of uh, in the early stages to make that determination right now is what I would say. So again, there's really no magic bullet when it comes to your credit score. We've gone over all the different factors that make up your credit score. And if you just, you know, pay things on time and use debt responsibly and, um, you know, just keep doing that for long periods of time, uh, your credit score can help but improve. Uh, the only way it will not improve if is if you're not um, engaging uh, in credit activity at all. In other words, if you're not using uh, credit cards. Uh, but again, you can do as with me. No need to carry a balance. Pay the balance in full every month. That's definitely, um, you know, what I think is best to do with credit cards because then you pay zero in interest, but you're still generating your credit history and you're getting all of the potential rewards, right? See my other videos um, for stuff on credit card rewards. All right. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.